Hi, it's Reagan Cypher. Welcome to part two of my 2023 call quality test series. If you haven't already watched part one, I highly recommend you do so. But essentially, we're putting 37 different models of TWS under 100 bucks through a series of different environmental tests to see how they perform on your voice calls. Today for part two, we're taking a look at how they perform in a busy outdoor environment where you're handling the wind, traffic noises, and all of those sorts of things which can derail your calls on your daily commute. So which earbuds are we testing today? Well, everything has to be under $100. So we've got some former flagship models, some of the likes of Oppo, OnePlus, Soundcore, and Huawei got some of those mid-tier products which are very popular from the likes of Soundpeats and Earfun and then we've got some ultra low budget ones which have really punched above their weight from the likes of QCY, Tronsmart and one more. Without further ado let's get on with those mic samples. And here we go this is the level of ambient noise in the scene it's in a UK city at rush hour at a busy intersection I'm using my Sony Xperia 1 IV and ProTake Professional. There's no additional compression being applied. This is a true representation of how your calls will sound on Android. Next up, we are testing another premium bud and another one from Soundcore, the Liberty 3 Pro. Despite its very bulbous design, it's gained a lot of popularity with YouTubers all over the world. Myself included, I'm really impressed with this earbud, even though it's getting a little bit long in the tooth now, we're on the Liberty 4. Still, it's one of my favorite sounding earbuds, especially if you like slightly recessed mids, and a very hefty lower frequency response with lots of detail in your trebles, then the Liberty 3 Pro have been a firm favorite with consumers for that very reason. And the call quality, if I remember rightly, wasn't too bad on them as well. Interested to hear how they are performing in 2023. The Oppo Enco X2 are another from Oppo. This time it's in their premium line of earbuds. And it's one of the most premium earbuds which we're putting through the test today. I've been impressed with them in the initial tests which I've done in outdoor and indoor environments. When it comes to full quality, they do seem to be one of the best which I've tested over the course of towards the end of 2022 and 2023 so far. The Neobuds Pro from Edifier have been Amongst the top of the list of recommendations from a lot of YouTubers, myself included, since they were released back at the tail end of 2021. They featured on my 2022 call quality test, and they were one of the star performers. If I remember rightly, environmental noise reduction is good, but unfortunately, your voice could sound a little bit muffled once you've got a lot of noise in the scene. So it will be an interesting comparison to see how they sound today. The OnePlus Buds Pro are another that has stood the test of time pretty well. I appreciate we're on the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 now, but unfortunately they don't sponsor me, they don't send me any earbuds, so this is the best that I could offer. When I did the test last time around, they performed really well, they were one of the stronger performers, but there's been more and more new releases since then, so I'm interested to hear how they fare compared to some of those new releases which you'll be seeing and hearing in this video. If like me you're a fan of semi-in earbuds and weird and wacky designs are something which you favour as well then the Samsung Galaxy Buds Live or the beans as they're affectionately known are probably going to be a plum choice for you despite the fact that again they're two years old and it's a bit of frustration that Samsung haven't updated this model since it is so popular. They performed pretty well when I tested them in 2022. So again, it's uh, interesting to hear whether they stood the test of time. The FreeBuds Pro from Huawei were one of the better performing earbuds actually when it comes to call quality back when I originally tested them out in 2022. Nowadays, they're not even the most recent set of Huawei FreeBuds Pro. 
we've had the free bus pro too since so they're a little bit dated but you can pick them up under a hundred dollars and that's why they make it into this full quality test we're in an outdoor environment testing how they perform when you're making or taking your voice call on your daily commute with a mixture of traffic and wind noise trying to scupper the quality of your call the air pro 3 from earfun are definitely moving out of that budget category into that sort of mid to upper tier in terms of the price i think they're retailing around the sort of 60 to 80 euros pounds dollars mark they're packed with a bunch of features but i'm not that impressed with them so far for my initial test although i'm interested to hear how the microphone performs on this model the capsule 3 pro from soundy uh, one of their strongest performing recent releases and they're tipping the scales in that upper echelon of the mid-tier but priced at somewhere between sort of 45 and 60 pounds euros or dollars where well, i did the initial test when i reviewed them on this channel not that long ago outdoor call quality seems to perform pretty well but it's been a little while so i'm interested to hear how they perform in comparison to some of the competition Next up, it is another mid-tier release from Soundpeak, the follow-up to the Mini Pro, the LDAC supporting Mini Pro HF. These also retail at somewhere between 45 and 65 pounds, euros and dollars. And it's been a little while since I tested them. Again, these were reviewed on this channel not that long ago. So I'm interested to hear how they perform this time around on outdoor calls and voice notes. Next up, it's a 2023 release again from Soundpeak. Their in ear LDAC supporting Engine 4. I don't really know too much about this because it's only just about to my letterbox. I haven't put it through any mic tests yet, so I'm really interested to hear how it's performing compared to some of the competitors in this space. The H1 from Soundpeaks are another that aren't exactly known for the quality of their voice calls. They're an in-ear bud, again without a stem. They may have dual mics on them, I don't really remember. But from what I do remember, they certainly didn't perform well on indoor or outdoor scenarios where you've got the introduction of any kind of background noise to try and get in the way of your call. I don't think call quality was the, the paramount of Soundpeaks' thoughts when they designed them. And as a result, you're not hearing great call quality on either example of the test which we've put them through so far. Soundpeace H2 is a stem-based in-ear bud from Soundpeace. And we're testing to see how they perform on your calls in an environment which is similar to what you would expect on your daily commute into school, college, work, etc. The kind of environmental sounds that we're trying to get around here uh, the sounds of traffic coming through and the wind and the kind of wind noise that the traffic creates. Also, you periodically got motorcycles go past, or a little bit of wind anyway going on in the background. So this should be a reasonable representation of what you can expect in that kind of environment. The Air 3 Deluxe HS are another sound piece release. They're a semi-in earbud and one of the most popular on the market in 2023, the follow-up to their also very popular Air 3. One of the things I noticed when I did the review about four or five months ago now is that call quality is one area where it did actually improve on the original. I noticed that the environmental noise reduction was improved, so I'm interested to hear how they perform in comparison to some of their competitors in 2023. The Air 3 is a semi-in earbud from Soundpeaks, another AirPod, original AirPod style earbud. I'm interested to hear how they perform in an environment which is commensurate with your daily commute. Funnily enough, last time around they did at least as well, if not better, than the Mini Pro HS. Than the Air 3 Deluxe HS, sorry. But it could be completely different this time around, and if I remember rightly, I think the Deluxe HS were better at outdoor sounds and being able to deal with the wind and the traffic noise and engines rumbling than the original Air 3. In some countries you can't pick up the Air 3 Deluxe HS. This is your only option. Although the Air 4 are coming very soon, so keep an eye out for that. 
Next up, we are testing another semi in air release. This time it's from Feel, the Feel Key, which I reviewed on this channel many months ago now. I can't even remember how long ago it was. They're still reasonably current. I don't think Feel have released any other semi in earbuds since. And they do feature four mics and environmental noise reduction. So it's another fresh test for them in a reasonably strenuous outdoor environment. The W220C are a mid-tier semi-in-ear release from Edifier, courtesy of a number of different features which they've got, which are a little bit different to the competition, such as Snapdragon sound. It's been a little while since I reviewed these, and I'm struggling to remember how they performed on calls. They've got some kind of environmental noise reduction. It is mentioned in their marketing material, but I'm interested to hear how they perform in 2023. And this time we're testing the Oppo Enco Air 3 in an outdoor environment with lots of traffic going on around me. I'm in a busy intersection here, and you've got a combination of wind noises, car noises, lorries coming through as well. So I'm interested to hear how the Oppo Enco Air 3 performs. The x boat from Yobibo is uh, having possibly the worst environmental sounds of any of the tests so far. It's a semi-in earbud and it's also OEM'd under the Lenovo brand. As I think it's a TW10 or TW60, something like that. We put them to the test last time around in part one. I'm interested to hear how they perform in part two in this outdoor test, which is trying to replicate what you can expect on a voice call on your daily commute. The Life Note 3S is another release from Soundstore. It's another one which is a little bit older. I reviewed this on this channel quite a while ago now. They're another STEM-based semi-in ear product, and they're in that mid-price category, retailing somewhere between 45 and 65 euros, pounds, and dollars. This time we have another one from Soundcore, and this time around it is their P3i. This is one of their budget range. It was released at some point in 2022. It's a STEM-based design, and apparently it has AI, environmental noise reduction, to reduce some of those pervasive ambient sounds in the scene to ensure that your voice comes through crisp and clear. But it's been a while since I had to listen back to these, so this will be a, a re-education for me as much as it is for you. The Life P2i from Soundcore are another in that very low budget category. Again, they retail sometimes in the UK as low as around 17 to 18 pounds. So it's definitely in the budget category of Soundcore's releases. For that matter, I'm interested to hear how the microphones perform. Like many of these budget releases, they do talk about environmental noise cancellation, but how effective that is, the proof is going to be in the pudding. With Realme's presence predominantly being in India, it was a little bit difficult to get hold of the Buds Air 3S, but they also fall into that budget category of being around the 25 to 30 pounds, euros, or dollars mark. There's no fancy terminology about the call quality on the marketing paraphernalia that Realme gave with this release. However, if I remember rightly, they performed pretty well at reducing environmental sounds. So I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing how they compare to some of their competitors. Next up, we are testing the QCY HT07 ArcBuds. A brand new release in May 2023. It's the follow-up to their HT05 Mellow Buds. It's another very low budget product. You can get these for around $30 pounds and euros. Guns of active noise cancellation. This is the first time which I've road tested it. So I'm really interested to hear how it performs on your outdoor calls and voice notes. Despite also being at the lower end of the budget range, the QCY HT05 Mellow Buds have six microphones in total across the two earbuds designed to improve that environmental noise cancellation even further. In the initial tests, they actually performed pretty well in outdoor environments. 
certainly reducing some of those low rumbling ambient sounds. So I'm looking forward to hearing how they compare this time around. Despite being a, another budget bud, the QCY CACs have some really impressive features such as a multi points and Snapdragon sound. And I've included them again in the full quality test for 2023. They're one I carried over from 2022. They've been carried over because I tested them after a firmware release from last time around and they seem to perform better. So I'm giving them a second chance. <laughs> this is redemption. They performed quite well to be fair in 2022, but they sounded even better when I tested them again recently. So let's hear how they're performing. The C13 is a budget release from QCY and it's been very popular with consumers across the globe due to its price, first and foremost, but also it's really nice, bass rich, but reasonably neutral sound signature that didn't have those sharp peaks, which you've got traditionally with budget PWS. And it remains popular today, even though it's two years since it was released. They performed pretty well on my 2022 mic test, so I'm giving them another chance. Let's have a listen and hear how they perform in 2023. The C16 from QCY is another in ear bud from a budget manufacturer that always seems to be punching above its weight when it comes to price performance parity. I don't think these are known for their core quality performance, they're the kind of button shape, which doesn't have a stem and that usually works against the performance on calls, but not always as we've seen in the previous test. So I'm interested to hear how the T16 are performing in an environment which is commensurate with what you would expect on your daily commute where you've got traffic and wind noise trying to scupper the quality of your voice call. One of the problems with doing these batch tests is you very quickly run out of things that are relevant or interesting to say. <laughs> I'm at that point now where I've already reviewed the QCY T20, so I can't even recycle this sample in the review. It's the QCY T20, a semi in earbud, and we're putting them through the outdoor test to see how they perform on calls, which is in an environment similar to what you would expect on your daily commute into work, college, school, etc. That is the QCY T20. The G1 is another stem based in here, but from QCY. And uh, we've got a souped up sayout, which has just come through the scene, which no doubt has made it even more difficult for these bugs to be able to convey your calls clearly and crisply and be able to deal with the ambient background noise, which is a bunch of cars going pretty fast right behind me. Well, this is probably commensurate with your journey into work if you're in a really busy city and you're walking along the main road and basically it's the worst case scenario for the buds in an outdoor environment for it to deal with. So I'm interested to hear how they perform. The C17 from QCY is another from the ultra low budget Chinese manufacturer of in-ear and semi-in-ear -ear buds. This one being an in-ear without a stem. They didn't perform particularly well in the first part of my 2023 full quality test. They've only got dual mics, I think, in these, or maybe a single mic. So expecting them to reduce those environmental sounds is pretty much impossible. But let's see how they perform on this outdoor test. The Piston Buds for one more stroke on Thing Air 3 were one of the surprise packages of my first part, <laughs> of the first part of my 2023 core quality test in a busy indoor environment. They performed surprisingly well. Uh, firstly, being able to get rid of those, some of those ambient sounds and also lifting your voice above the sounds that you've got going on around you. This is a different kind of test for it though, with different types of sounds that can scupper your voice calls. So I'm interested to hear how the D One More Piston Buzz will perform in this busy outdoor environment. The Air 3 2 from Ponting, a sub brand of One More performed reasonably well, if I remember rightly, in the first part of the 2023 full quality test. This is how you can expect this product to perform when you're using them for voice calls, maybe on your daily commute into work, college, school, etc. We've got a mixture of traffic noises, engine noises, wind, and pedestrians and cyclists coming past occasionally as well. But it's commensurate with what you would expect on your daily commute. The Apollo Air from Transmart 
was Trump Month's flagship release, actually, back in late 2021, maybe early 2022. The price dropped dramatically when Trump Month moved more into speakers. So you can still pick these up for well under $100, I think well under $50. And if I remember rightly, actually, on calls, they weren't too bad on the indoor test, which we did last time around. Outdoors, obviously, a very different scenario for them and doesn't necessarily mean they're going to perform well on the environment, which is commensurate with your daily commute. So I'm interested to hear how the Transmart Apollo Air perform. The Onyx Ace Pro is a semi-in-ear bud from Transmart that was released during 2022. We're putting them through the outdoor call quality test today to see how they perform on your voice calls in an environment that's similar to what you would expect on your daily commute. And one of the amusing things which I've noticed is some people seem to think that the gimbal which I'm using to record this is a speed camera, so it's starting to slow down. So I must hide that a little bit better because we want the noise of traffic flying through uh, to represent what it would be like on your daily commute. Next up, we are testing the Transmart on its Pure, an ultra low budget dual driver in earbud, which if I remember rightly, didn't really perform particularly well on the call test indoors where we had a busy cafe environment. Outdoors, I can't imagine it's going to perform any better due to the shape, the lack of stem, and those environmental noises being enhanced further. That is the Transmart Onyx Pure. The Mini from South Peaks are a little bit old now but in terms of their performance. They were great either. They are meant to have AI Elevark, I think, environmental noise reduction, but we didn't really notice that too much in the busy indoor test. It could be completely different in the outdoor test. I'm trying to remember what they were like in 2022. I don't think they were great. <laughs> so you can expect to see a similar level of performance here on your daily commute in real life. Well, the Life Classic are an ultra low budget offering from Soundy. They retail on Amazon of around the £25 to $30 mark. I don't think calls were optimized on this model compared with some of their other higher profile and higher budget releases. But I'm still interested to hear how the life graphics perform in this busy intersection outdoor scenario. Phew, we're finished. Again, part two is complete. We put all those earbuds through the busy outdoor scene. What did you think performed best? I'm not gonna score every individual model, but I will go through a few of my findings now. For me, on the premium buds, you could see that there was a real toil between reducing the environmental sounds and conveying your voice as clearly as possible. I felt on the likes of the Samsung Galaxy Buds Live and the Edifier Neo Buds Pro and certainly the Oppo Enco X2, that noise reduction algorithm was just trying a little bit too hard and it was reducing and muffling the sound of your own voice. On the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro and the OnePlus Buds Pro, they seem to get the algorithm a little bit better. There was a little bit more noise being let through by the microphones, but your voice was much clearer. And that is the ultimate aim here, is just enabling your voice call to be heard at the other end of the line. Sometimes if there is a little bit of noise coming through from the environment, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's probably better that the person on the other end of the phone can hear what you're saying. And my pick of the bunch, actually, in terms of price performance parity, is probably the Soundpeats Capsule 3 Pro. I thought they got a great balance between noise reduction and also conveying your voice with sufficient clarity and tone. So I was really impressed with how they performed and it's not the first time actually I've been impressed with them in various different tests. I also thought that the Airfun Air Pro 3 did pretty well. I'm not a huge fan of these earbuds in terms of their sound signature, but for calls, I think they've performed adequately across both part one and part two. And again, because of the price, it is a little bit lower than some of those premium buds. I felt like it was a good trade-off between that price performance parity which we've been talking about. Also just overall I noticed that this kind of scene was much less challenging for even the budget earbuds. You saw some strong performers in that sub $50 category, the likes of the Soundpeats Air 3 Deluxe HS, both of the Soundcore buds as well 
although the slightly more expensive one the p3i did give you improved noise reduction so that's another big recommendation under that sort of 30 40 dollar category and all the Tronsmart buds as well despite being really low budget seem to handle those typical day-to-day environmental sounds outdoors on your daily commute a little bit better than I expected. Now the real kryptonite for earbuds regardless of what the price is in this kind of scene is sudden bursts of noise. You notice that on the lights of the QCYG1 test and the Yobibo X-Boat and some of the others as well where you had sudden blasts of siren or super impreza or and most pertinently a sudden gust of wind wind really is the kryptonite when it comes to conveying your voice calls it can be the difference between you coming through reasonably clearly or not at all unfortunately there wasn't too much wind in this scene other than the kind of wind created by the cars flying through the traffic lights so in the next part to my 2023 call quality test we will have slightly different sounds and wind noise will be one of those real challenges that will be put into the test with all these earbuds. I know the wind isn't something that you get all year round, but you do get it from time to time. So we'll be taking another natural test to see how these earbuds perform when there's a lot of wind in the scene that can really scupper your voice calls. But for the majority of us, we don't get wind all year round. So hopefully you'll have found that this scene is commensurate with what you can expect on your daily commute. And if you're here just checking to see how an earbud performed, hopefully it gave you some crucial advice when it comes to selecting whether to buy that earbud or not. Once again, thanks for watching. This is Reagan Cypher, signing off.